Thank you, Zanine. Thank you very much. Uh, our next speaker will be Aileen Courtenay. He's chief executive, executive of, uh, officer at uh, Roslyn Cells. So um, one of the leading companies for the production of stem cell and the development of new cell therapy. Uh, after studying uh, economics at Cambridge University, Aiden specialized in finance in London before concentrating for the last 15 years on high technology and science-based companies. Uh, he has extensive experience of working with leading scientific and technological specialists in many industry and leading multidiscipline teams to develop commercially focused business based on new technologies. Uh, Aiden also has a, a master degree in law and uh, is associate member of the K1 Madison Institute, sorry for the pronunciation, for medicine, life science and law at University of Edinburgh. And again, he, we, he is one of our flagship uh, project in IMI uh, by uh, being uh, the partners in the EBIS project, which is the European Bank for uh, Induced Pluripotent Stem Cells. So thank you very much, Aiden, for being here and presenting uh, EBIS. Oh, thank you, Fatia, for uh, such a uh, nice introduction. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, the European Bank for Induced Stem Cells uh, is a 35 million euro program with 26 participants which uh, we have launched at the beginning of this year and has a clear aim to collate, test and distribute induced pluripotent stem cells which have been made by various programs uh, across Europe and making them available to, uh, to many partners. The reason why we want to establish this bank is because individual uh, IPS projects, uh, just as, as Zam has described and Ollie described, uh, in themselves are terrific, but there is a missed opportunity which eBISC is going to uh, help address. Uh, in putting these slides together, of course, I was actually relying on both <coughs> Ollie Isaacson to uh, describe the power of IPS cells and Zam to describe a, uh, a specific and very substantial program in, in, uh, in STEMBank. And I'd just like to thank both of them because they did a terrific job, which makes this, uh, this presentation so much easier for me to do. Zam, in particular, when, when he described um, STEMBank, uh, talked about three different elements in, in his workflow. First of all, there's the clinic where they're procuring tissue from various donors, and he talked about Oxford and Copenhagen and Lubeck and the like. And then there's uh, an IPS specialist who are the guys who know how to take the blood or skin and turn it into the IPS cells, uh, as Oli uh, Isaacson described. And once having made the stem cell lines, then they can expand the cells up and make them pass them on to the really clever guys, people like Zam, who know how to differentiate the cells and actually do the research that they want to get to in that, in, in that particular program. And, that, and that, that characteristic is is true of many projects. But here's the missed opportunity. If you can make the stem cell lines and you can expand them up to service the needs of that specific project, why don't we d expand them further and make them available to, to other research groups as well? And that's what uh, EBISC will be, will be tackling. So just using that little graphic and thinking about um, multiple uh, research programs, not of most of which are nowhere near the scale uh, and caliber of, uh, of STEM Bank. Uh, IMI projects are considerably larger than found elsewhere, but there are many programs across Europe which are making IPS cell lines. And what EBIS will do is actually engage with those projects and uh, take the stem cell lines that they're making and then make them available to other researchers so that they can carry on and, make, and do their research without having to have the cost or delay of making the, the original stem cell lines. And what's more, because the cells have already been used in research, we know more about them. So actually, as a research tool, um, being able to distribute cells to, to further researchers really helps them drive forward their research. You might think then that what EBISC is all about is just a large warehouse um, which is collecting in cells and shipping them out. Actually, what we need to do to make this work is actually look at all facets of the research landscape, uh, working with many different projects. We need to engage with uh, uh, the different research programs to make sure that the tissue was donated and the contractual arrangements were fit not just for the individual project, but available for wider distribution. And Zam actually alluded to the challenge of getting consent and, and distribution right, and is, is working, doing, in, we know th the work they're doing, and it's exactly the same that we need to support for all the programs across Europe. Again, as Zam also, thank you very much, Zam, really appreciate it, 
um, made, made point. We need to make sure that there are common and solid standards for the making of stem cell lines, so that if we're going to pull cells from different places, from Spain or from Italy or from Copenhagen, and make them available to researchers in Germany, they know that those different cell lines are, are usable and, and comparable. Otherwise, we're, otherwise we're, not, uh, we're not providing uh, the resources we want. So we need to make sure of common standards. Yes, we also need a very large central facility, which is what we're establishing, which will be uh, in the UK in Cambridge, supported by the uh, Fraunhofer Institute in near Saarbrücken. And also, the largest box on that slide, the data management challenge is enormous. We need to be able to pull together the data from all these cell lines and make that available to other researchers, while on the one hand, respecting confidentiality of proprietary research, and also confidentiality of the, uh, of the donors and the clinical uh, uh, information that was provided, but making that available to, to subsequent researchers. Finally, we need to know what, what researchers want. So the catalogue that we build up within EBISC actually meets the research group, researchers' needs. And that's, that's also vital for what we're doing. So um, we have 26 partners, because there's a lot to do, led by, led by Pfizer and uh, Tim Althoff, um, as, uh, uh, and I are working together on, on leading this program, and it's, uh, it's going extremely well. I, I'm not going to give a roll call, but I want to make one key point about this, which is that IMI projects are big, and we're here not just to deliver the research, but actually to have a, a structuring effect on Europe and change the way we do research in Europe. And I think that I'm very pleased to be, and very proud to be, and privileged to be leading this program, but actually seeing that, yes, it's of a scale that we can actually change and improve the way research is done. At the same time, in putting it together, we didn't want to have every single member of the European uh, Union in it, or the project wouldn't be manageable. So it was a matter of actually getting that balance. And with nine countries and 26 partners, um, actually, it's going extremely well. Um, we've been going six months, so we, don't have, we haven't been going that long, but we've actually got a three-year deadline for what we want to achieve. So um, on the one hand, we're, we're less of being started later than Zan, but I'm closer to my finishing line, so we're very focused on this. I want to highlight just a few things from what we're, we're seeking to achieve right now. First of all, we will be distributing cell lines within the consortium by the end of this year with common standards and having addressed the uh, contractual arrangement. By the end of three years, we'll be, making, we'll be actively distributing the cell lines to, to a variety of partners, uh, both within the consortium and to other users. W one of the key aspects of what we're doing to do that is we'll actually be commissioning new lines within the EBIS program, meeting the needs particularly of the FPA partners in the consortium. So Pfizer and AstraZeneca and uh, UCB and other partners within the program are able to make specific requests for cell lines and we'll be making them actively and as well as making them available to other people afterwards. Beyond 2016, we'll continue to expand the catalogue and with the aim that this is a permanent in, uh, facility which will be um, uh, operating by the, uh, on a self-standing basis by the end of 2019. <coughs> so, two more slides to go. How will researchers benefit from this? I think that in the first instance, looking at programs that are making iPS cells and saying how can we help those programs, clearly we're in, EBIS will be in a position to support the procurement of primary tissue, get those standards. The lessons that Zan and his colleagues have learned themselves, EBIS will be able to pull that in, we're, we've got our own uh, uh, efforts in those areas, and then disseminate them out to new IPS programs to make sure that others actually be able to, are able to uh, get moving faster. Uh, we're also able to provide connections between different IPS projects uh, across Europe, and also for many programs, we'll, EBIS will also be able to provide a simple way to distribute lines. Many funding agencies, in providing grants to create, do research, insist that the research assets, in this case the IPS cell lines, are made available to other people. That actually is a burden on the researchers, and EBIS is for IPS cells, EBIS will be able to take that burden away from them and be able to allow them to uh, address that need uh, in a very efficient manner. Obviously, EBISC is also looking at how do we help other researchers. And I want to highlight just a couple of points. Firstly, we can make IPS cell lines available with reduced delay and cost. But we can also provide many more lines, which goes back to the, uh, some of the comments that uh, uh, Ali Isaacson was saying about how do you get control lines? How do you get a wide variety of cell lines so you can actually do the comparison between different in, in to, uh, properly across the board to get proper data for your research? And EBIS can provide that bandwidth to people. 
We'll also be making sure that the cell lines we uh, uh, distribute will be available on simple contractual terms so that the researchers, whether it be academic or commercial, actually know what they can do with the cell lines once they've got them. And also going beyond that, I think EBIS provides a contact point for companies developing technologies for either the uh, culture of stem cells or the characterizations. And so we're able to sort of provide them with an access point for how can their technology be demonstrated or developed uh, across Europe. Generally, I think what EBIS is looking to do is not just distribute the cell lines, but actually facilitate far greater integration across Europe for the use of research in IPF cells. And that moves us on to, to asking, how does the public benefit? Now, I'm just going to put one, one comment here. There's obviously that we're helping IMI achieve its goals in terms of furthering healthcare research and all of, those, all of that mission as well. But I want to put one thing, which is that by creating a central resource, EBISC is able to provide confidence to all stakeholders about how IPS cell research is done in the, in, across Europe. In particular, that talks to potential donors of tissue and importantly, their clinicians. Often we have uh, medical clinicians who have a feel they have a generally have a fiduciary duty to look after their patients. We want to give them confidence that iPS cell lines that are being made for bona fide research, uh, which is facilitated to uh, EBISC standards, will actually be um, is something they should support. And I think EBIS can provide that thought leadership to actually facilitate uh, uh, greater iPS cells. Moving on, we can then also help research funders in, the, in making sure that cell lines are available and distributed. And generally, I think that eBISC is able to provide a focal point for the way that IPS cell research is carried forward. So I'm delighted to be leading this project. I think it's a fantastic project. We have some frightening deadlines. However, I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll do it all on time. Thank you.